This is the new Inlet Reach RS3 GNSS receiver with a built-in high-precision IMU that can be used for tilt compensation. And this whole setup is under $3,000, which I think is absolutely insane. Okay, I'm powering on the RS3. Now in the App Store, you can download the Inlet Flow app, and this is the app that we're going to use to set up the RS3 as well as to collect data. Okay, so it's looking for my receiver, and there it is, Reach RS3. I'm going to select it, and we have a single solution positional accuracy, and that's because we don't have an input correction coming into our GNSS receiver. If I go back and I go to the correction input, I can see a bunch of different methods for input. Now I've covered most of these methods in my past videos, but for today we're going to be using the end trip over Bluetooth option. So I'll select that, it's gonna ask me for a profile. I'm in the state of Michigan, so I'm going to be using the M. Cores network. So I can just call this Michigan, my IP address, port number my username and my password everything looks good here so i'll hit save and if all goes well we are receiving corrections and that little beep there we have a fixed solution now the upgrade between the rs2 and the rs3 is the tilt compensation the rs3's imu is able to use tilt compensation to find the point as if we were holding the rod plump essentially eliminating the need for a level bump and here we have the option to enable tilt compensation so i'll go ahead and turn it on now, in order to initialize the IMU, I'm going to need to pick up the RS3 and move it in a back and forth motion as I move forward in order to get the tilt compensation to work. Go. There we go. That little beep right there means that we are initialized. Now, tilt compensation has become the new standard when serving with GNSS because of the time efficiency that it provides when doing a survey. And to prove it, I'm going to survey both sides of the sidewalk, one side using tilt compensation and the other side without. And let's see how much faster it is to collect data without having to plumb up the pole every single time I want to take a reading. <laughs> So as you can see, it's only taken me half as much time to do this with tilt compensation than to do it traditionally. And that's the power of having an IMU built into your GNSS receiver. Now to test the accuracy of the IMU on the RS3, I'm going to stand in one place and tilt the rod in all sorts of directions. And in theory, I should be getting the same exact coordinates every single time, no matter which direction I tilt this rod. Okay, so I'm standing right here. Okay, so I found myself here on the map and I'll just take the first reading, point number one with a plumb rod. So I'll make sure to plumb the rod, save. Okay, now we'll tilt it like this, save. We'll go back, we'll go like this. Maybe we'll go one like this. Maybe I'll really push it. How about we push it a lot like this? And we'll do one more, just like that. Okay, we've got eight sampled points to our one plumbed point. Let's take a look at the differences. Okay, and here are all of the coordinates for the various measurements we took. Point number one being the plumb pole and then two through nine are the variations of different tilts that we did. Now the tilt that we did between points two and five was not nearly as significant as points six through nine. So we should put that into account when looking at the different errors and differences between these different tilt options in comparison to our initial point. Now I've plotted the X and Y coordinates between these different points and these are in state plane coordinates and the units are international feet don't worry i will go over the metric conversions at the end but just taking a look visually here you can see where point number one is and points two three four and five are all relatively closer than points six seven eight and nine again this is contributed to the amount of tilt that i added to the measurement the more I tilted the rod, the more error I introduced. Now, while this looks significant, this is actually not too bad because I've got this out to the nearest hundredth of a foot. So the proportions here look really bad. But once we take a look at the differences, I think it'll be much clearer about how far away these points actually are. Similarly here, this is the Z component. Point number one coming in at 605.64. 
and points two through five being closer than points six through nine. Now, when looking at the differences, I just took the X, Y, Z components and took the differences of them. Now in the X direction, these are all under a 10th. For my metric users, that's within two centimeters with the majority of errors coming in between point six and nine. Y component, we see the same thing with a outlier in point number nine coming in at 15 hundredths or four and a half centimeters. And in the elevation, same story here. The first four points are within seven hundredths or two centimeters. And then the second set of points are within 16 hundredths or roughly five centimeters. Again, I've made a graph here to visualize everything. On the left side here, we've got feet. On the right side, we've got centimeters. And overall, I mean, you are looking at a couple of hundredths or within one or two centimeters for the most part. I mean, look at how extreme I was holding this pole at times. If you're holding the rod at this tilt angle, then you shouldn't expect to have the highest level of accuracy. But what you should expect is to be within five centimeters or about 15 to 16 hundredths, which if you're okay with those differences, then the Imlid Reach RS3 with its built-in IMU is a great surveying tool using its tilt compensation features. If you'd like to check out the Reach RS3, or any of Imlid's GNSS receivers, then be sure to check out the link in the description. If you'd like to learn more about collecting data using Imlid Flow, then I suggest you check out this video right here.